Good morning, VC. Or good uh, day, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. Anyone who stumbles upon this video. I'm Nico. You might remember me if you have seen my videos before. I've been absent for no reason at all. Um, I'm back with an update and I I have uh, quite the stack of records to show. Both uh, reissues and uh, the cream of the crop of course. A couple of grails at the end. What we are listening to now is uh, a German band called uh, Cornucopia. I believe this is their only album from uh, 1972. Hard progressive uh, German rock. You know, the kind I uh, really love. This album is called uh, Full Horn. Excellent heavy progressive German rock. I hope you hear it in the background. This is a fairly recent uh, and I guess unofficial reissue which fills a hole in the market when uh, no one takes the charge and releases it properly. You get those unofficial reissue labels or bootleg bootlegs if you wish. This is uh, on Icon Records released uh, last year. Excellent sounding cheap reissue. Another unofficial release is Ashra Temple, live in Bern, 1971. It's a decent recording and uh, an awesome uh, space rock, uh, sidelong space rock jam on both sides, featuring uh, Klaus Schulze on drums just before he left. So. A must-have if you're into space rock from Germany, early 70s. Not the best sounding, uh, not the best quality pressing, but uh, still worthwhile getting if you can. <laughs> I really hope the music isn't too loud, but... Uh, Another reissue, unofficial or not, I don't know. Absinthe Records have reissued the uh, Strawberry Paths only album called When the Raven Has Come to the Earth. And this is of course Pre-Flied Egg, the Japanese heavy prog band who released two albums, I believe, on the Vertigo Swirl label. Worth checking out. Heavy progressive rock from Japan. Something I've been uh, vibing to quite a lot lately is this uh, fresh reissue of uh, Steel Mill and their only album from 1972 called uh, Green Eyed God. It was released in 1972 in Germany, although the band is was a British band. And uh, the British release didn't see day before 1975 and the recording sounds like it was made in 1970. Heavy progressive uh, with hints of psychedelia. Just awesome. You must get this one if you like heavy scruffy prog rock with a bit of flute and sax here and there which just add to the atmosphere in my, my opinion at least. Which is worth nothing, I guess, but uh, there you go. Uh, live recording of Budgie from 1972. Uh, okay in parts, varying sound quality, but uh, fun to listen to for sure. From the two, three first albums. A Gearson reissue which always means quality, is this one. The band Apple 
with their only album An Apple A Day, which is a psychedelic monster. Quite uh, garage psyche uh, inside in the sound. Uh, pop psych with a scruffy edge to it. Just awesome. And uh, comes with a flip back cover which the original UK issues did on the page one label I believe. But the page one reissue is too expensive. This is worthwhile checking out. Both melodic uh, hard edged in places and uh, well crafted songs. I don't think there's a dull moment of this one. Awesome stuff. An apple a day. A band I've shown before, which I forgot I had in my collection, but it's Phoenix and their first album, which is called Say Seene Au Dot Numa. <laughs> which is supposed to be a sound like Romanian. This is a Romanian band. Awesome heavy prog rock from 1972. This is a recent reissue on the Nemo label. Awesome stuff from Romania. The land of uh, Dracula. I bought a recent reissue of Norman Haynes' band, Den of Iniquity. Uh, be just because it has two bonus tracks. It's the Athelion reissue, which I can uh, recommend highly. They have been reissuing uh, lost classics such as uh, East of Eden, Arisachal, um Velvet Fog, amongst others. And they always include one or two bonus tracks at the end of each side, which I find awesome. And uh, the reissue, tr uh, the bonus track on here is, uh, I guess, a single track. It's called. Uh... Well, I can't see it here. Never mind. If you want to buy this one, the originals are expensive as heck. Uh, but uh, go for the Ethelion reissue, which has two bonus tracks. And of course, Norman Haynes was uh, in charge of the band Locomotive, uh, which, uh, who released one album called uh, We Are Everything You See. And he uh, played a little bit with Black Sabbath before they released their first album, but declined to be a full-time member and went off to do his own solo project, which of course sank like a Led Zeppelin. A nice reissue of uh, a band you all know, Flower Traveling Band, and this is the third or fourth album, Makeup. Originally it came in a leather bag, but this is a Red Circle reissue. Cheap to find, excellent sounding, and uh, you have to get this album. It's not quite as good as Satori, but uh, high up there in the ranks of Flower Traveling Band. Bought myself a reissue of Arsacho on Ethelion, just because of uh, two bonus tracks called uh, Swooping Bill and uh, Ego Man and the Salesman Song. Three bonus tracks on this one. Reissued last year. Excellent sounding uh, reissue. An Irish folk rock band which you definitely should lend your ear to if you like uh, Trees or uh, what's their name? Fairport Convention is Mellow Candle and their only album from 1972 or 71 called Swaddling Songs. This is awesome folk rock all the way through, progressive folk rock. And this is a tapestry reissue from 2000s. Just wonderful melodic uh, folk rock. Wonderful uh, stuff there. And the uh, originals are rare as hen's teeth and of course expensive as 
heck. Cheers. Whipping through the reissues. Next one is a long time one for me. Uh, I'm still searching for an original, but they're rare to find in decent condition, so I settled for an icon reissue of Second Life's only album, at least under the name Second Life. Because this is actually the debut album to Tiger B. Smith before they renamed themselves Tiger B. Smith. And this is heavy ass uh, progressive crowd rock. Just awesome, scruffy, heavy, full of guitar riffs, pounding drums and bass. Icon reissue on second. Of Second Life's only album, and of course you all know Tiger B. Smith, so uh, it's right up in the alley with uh, with that band. A little less glam rock, but uh, never mind. Okay, that was the reissues. I've been purging a lot of my uh, doubles uh, the last few weeks and been able to score. That uh, silly pile of reissues and a couple of uh, originals. A few grails, of course, and one which has been shown by Randy at Deadwax 66. So I jumped on it when I found a cheap copy of Sweet Pain, an original uh, United Artists issue, USA with the lyric sheet and everything and this is a decent album I think this is a sleeper it has a couple of duds but uh, mostly I enjoy this album heavy not so progressive but just heavy classic rock um, awesome cheap album if you can find it I think the UK issue if or the German issue is quite expensive but the US issue is quite cheap but rare to find on these parts so glad to pick that up for next to nothing I really pick up records for next to nothing I usually shell out big bucks so <laughs> well on to the grail section finally I found a nice copy of Budgie's first album I've shown this before a German reissue, but this time around I found the original UK MCA issue on the Dogbone label, the red and pink Dogbone label. And these are so hard to find in good condition, so I just had to grab it. Paid a little bit for it, but uh, if you like to watch the records I show, you must like Budgie early hard rock in the vein of uh, Black Sabbath and Deep Purple and Led Zeppelin but uh, a bit more scruffy from Wales I believe. Next up a nice addition to my Vertigo Swirl collection an original UK issue of Pato's first album can't go wrong with the two first Pato albums, but stay clear of their third. Roll them, smoke them, and put another line out. That's a terrible album, in my opinion. An Italian progressive monster is uh, Osana's second album, Pale Puli. This is a Seven Seas reissue from 1979, a Japanese reissue. Excellent condition, excellent sounding. This is awesome Italian prog. Top notch, top 10 Italian prog in my opinion. Originally from uh, 1972, I think. And now, the last four albums, two crowd rock rails and two British rails. Let's start with Message and their first album. I have showcased this album before. 
the dawn and you is coming I had have a reissue but this is the original German issue on Basilius Bellafon records from uh, 1972 I believe in just stunning stunning condition and I I like this album as much as From Books and Dreams, which is considered the best album. This is awesome as well. So, if you want to hear top-notch, high quality, the best of uh, German progressive rock, I recommend you check out Message, The Dawn A New Is Coming and From Books and Dreams. This one I paid an arm and a leg to get, but it's worth it. It's their only album, and they originally only existed for one or two years. I managed to snag a copy of Professor Wolf's only album, self-titled, from 1971, on the Metronome label in stunning condition this album is so hard to find and let alone in this condition with i should have prepared a promo a press kit from uh, metronome records bio of the band and uh, there's more A press photo of the band, which is the same picture from the gatefold sleeve. Awesome, heavy, progressive, German, sung, hard rock. On the original metronome label. Oh my god, this is a holy grail indeed. I recommend you check out the track Hetzjagd and Hans im Glück. <laughs> I, get, I get goosebumps only mentioning the titles. Just another awesome, awesome obscure classic from the German underground. On a major label that is very strange. And uh, they disbanded just after releasing their only album and uh, a couple of uh, incarnations kept on playing uh, for a couple of years but they never released anything else than that album two british grails uh, a british band which of course released only one album this is a german original in stunning condition horse their only album from 1970, self-titled, heavy progressive rock. Check out the tracks, uh, The Sacrifice, see the people creeping round. This is just stunning all the way through. Fantastic album, fantastic band. Some of the band members uh, continued uh, uh, in another band called Saturnalia. Uh, which was a band that released the first ever, I think, picture disc in 1973. Cornucopia is finished and I want to show you the last album, which is the holiest grail of them all today. And it's an original copy of Writing on the Wall. A Scottish heavy progressive band released only this album in 1969 on the incredibly rare to find Middle Earth label. I have to pull the record. Middle Earth only released four LPs in their uh, career. One more is worthwhile getting and it's Arcadium Breathe a While. But this is excellent hard psychedelic progressive rock fantastic and to find it in this condition to find it at all and being able to buy it that's a dream come through 
Well, that's it for today. The bragging is over. I hope you are all doing well in these pandemic times and um, stay safe, stay isolated, listen to a lot of records and uh, watch VC videos. Take care everyone and thanks for stopping by.